Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to continue working and uh, on an example that shows the motion setup uh, for transient uh, simulator and uh, this video is going to show you how to uh, uh, set up the setup uh, of the transient system and also um, boundary and excitations and things like that and also I'm gonna go over the result. Okay so as you remember from the previous uh, design, we, we, we left the design to this point that we created a magnet, we assigned the material, and we created a band, and we also created the sensor, which is uh, here is called halt sensor. Now, what you want to do is you want to define uh, how the transition or transformation is. So you select the band and you go to the modeler, and uh, you don't go to the modeler, you go to Maxwell 3D, and then you go under the model and you say motion setup so I'm gonna assign a band and I'm gonna say what kind of a setup I have so if you already assign the band you will have this delete all options uh, light up so if it's the case and it's uh, it's possible to click on delete all first delete all because probably you did some mistake before so delete it all and then again go and assign the band okay assigning a band and over there I'm gonna say it's a rotational uh, motion and it's gonna be over the Z axis which is true and um, on the on the mechanical I want I have different ways of defining how the motion is gonna go I can say it's it's 60 rpm which makes sense meaning that it will re revolve one time per second in one second or I can say degree per second and I can say 360 degrees per second these are the same uh, units as equivalent so I'm just pressing OK on that go back to the analysis I'm gonna right click and add a simulations and I say okay I need one second to achieve 36 360 degrees of revolution so I will say set up and for one second and I can say let's say two millisecond uh, it's very smart if you say 2m it realizes millisecond and uh, as soon as you select somewhere else it, it goes over there and says millisecond and uh, you can save the setup as well you can say I, I want to see the fields and uh, to do that you can say start from zero and end at one second and uh, go every let's say uh, five milliseconds or, or so and uh, show me the and, and save this the, the state and then I can have an, a nice animation for that and that's it press OK and uh, the only uh, warning that you might get is um, over the band rate excitation is you haven't set up the eddy, uh, eddy current excitations but it's just want to make sure that you already put some time to check out the eddy current uh, whether or not you want to have eddy current effect in any of your models so what you can do is you can go to the excitations and uh, you just select the eddy current effect and as soon as you open up this window it will turn off this error meaning that you saw this and you choose to not select eddy current effect for the magnet just press ok and now if you do the check you wouldn't see that everything is fine okay so that's that's the way of Maxwell telling you that do you remember did you, did you do that or not anyway so now I'm gonna go and uh, press analyze all and it, it will take some time to to analyze everything and uh, before I, before I do that I have to save it somewhere so I can actually go and you know save it uh, over here and say okay um, we call it motion um, transient okay and uh, save that and as soon as I do that it starts simulating and I will come back when the simulation is finished sorry I did a big mistake and uh, it says that the error in finding a stationary part and uh, things like that um, although I did like exercise before but uh, still I forgot things so anyway so what you want to do is you want to go and create a region so you tell the Maxwell that okay this is my region that you want to do the simulations in I'm gonna use the cylinder again and uh, I'm gonna put um, 0 for the X 0 for the Y minus 8 uh, for the for the Z and of course 16 for the Z now and uh, 
for the dy 0 and for the dx 16 I guess I did it again it's it's in a wrong order so uh, because the radius and height are the same I just need to change this uh, dx to z and there we go you have your region actually let's call it region 2 so it's called region so the region is a place that you do all your simulations and Maxwell understands that it, it, it needs to simulate inside within this region so the mesh should be inside this region it's not infinite mesh so that that's helped a lot and um, one last thing that I wanted to do is um, I wanted to tell you that uh, sometimes you do need to define the meshing and uh, to do that um, there are different ways to do uh, to do defining the mesh uh, let me delete this one. I don't know what it is. Um, so in this case, because we do have uh, uh, a magnet, so we want to make sure that the magnet is actually well defined. Right click on that and uh, go to the define mesh and say, okay, inside selection, I want to make it length space and let's call it magnet. And um, I want to make sure that you at least put minimum number of elements, maximum number of elements, a thousand. That means that it understands that it's going to be in order of thousand, uh, or like five hundred or something. It's not going to be two nodes or three nodes. So that's a very good hint for the sim uh, simulator to know. And um, and also you can do the same thing with the region, and you can go where the region and right click on that and say, you know. Um, for the for the inside base, I can say the maximum. Let's call it region. And uh, let's say for the maximum number of the region, uh, I'm looking at like a 8,000 or like 10,000 uh, to be more precise uh, number of elements. And that will basically give you a better uh, basically uh, results. Uh, one last thing is uh, if you select the band, since the band is a uh, uh, cylindrical object so you can do a uh, mesh based on the surface appro approximation which it which is better and the reason that I'm saying is because the the cylindrical option uh, uh, the cylindrical object has curvature surface as well as flat surface so it's a good thing to tell the a simulator that how to approach that uh, because it's not that much easy object to uh, to do the meshing and not that if you don't do that you wouldn't get the result I'm just saying that if you do it it's, you, you, you get the better result faster so let's go to the uh, surface approximation and say the maximum normal deviation for this uh, should not be a more than three degrees which is a good tight it's tightening it a bit uh, you call it band or whatever you want to call it and um, and also for the uh, maximum aspect ratio you can actually put five here that uh, part I I don't understand exactly um, how you you are suggest you are supposed to do it right but I think uh, most of the time you just divide 10 to, to 2 or make it 5 and you get a good result out of it um, and anyway, the rest is fine and press OK on that and uh, now you have your setup ready and your mesh is also ready and uh, you already defined the excited like, eddy current thing so everything should be check marked and now if you do the analyze all and you wait for it it, it should start uh, doing the initial mesh and the setup so everything is fine and let me know if you have any questions by the way on the comment uh, sections I'm gonna come back when the simulation is over and show you the results guys I realized something that I, I have to uh, notify uh, the simulation uh, put it 20 milliseconds for uh, time step, not 2 milliseconds. Um, I was meant to put 20 milliseconds, but for some reason it was 2 milliseconds. So just correct that, otherwise, it will be taking a long time to finish. Okay? Okay, YouTube, finally, the simulation is finished. I just did two. Uh, adjustment again I'm gonna make sure that you guys are on board uh, replace the list by saying 50 milliseconds for a step size and also for the general make sure that the time step is 20 milliseconds okay so these two are important you have to make sure that uh, you apply those and um, now coming back to the to the results what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you first what we have um, you know what I'm gonna get rid of the the region that we have and uh, region is off 
uh, I just select on the eye over here and uh, and and, uh, and hide it. And now um, let's see what do we have. Select the the magnet and then uh, actually you don't need to select the magnet. Go to the plane and select X Y. So this is the plane that you are going to plot everything on it. And then you go to the fields. Uh, you can do it by right clicking here or you can go to Maxwell 3D and over there you go to fields over the fields B and then you go to the B vector and over there you just place done and uh, now you have to double click on the time minus one over here or you can go to the view and uh, gosh uh, and then you go and say uh, I want to show you the other way because it's kind of important so let's see you go to yeah you go to the view and uh, you go to the set simulation uh, context. So you click this. Or you just come here and double click on this. Simpler. And uh, zero time, just press OK. So it starts at zero. This is minus one. That means it doesn't show anything to you. So it creates the B for you. And uh, what you can do is you can go cl right click on the B and modify the attributes and make sure that you are turning off the map size under the marker and arrow tab and also you reduces the size so you can see most of the arrows over here and I'm applying that and I'm saying okay that's cool so and this is the region that I just deleted it that's why it shows all the way to the region okay now our sensor is somewhere around here uh, where is our sensor hold sensor Hold sensor is um, let me move this thing I think. here, right there. So this is all hold hold sensor. So now we are going to measure how much B we are having inside this hold sensor. Um, to do that, uh, what one one thing you can do is you go on the results and right click. Sorry you don't do that. You go on field overlays and right click and select the calculator. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how much B fields is going inside this halt sensor. So I go and select the uh, and, and I want to divide that by the area or the surface of the halt sensor so I get a, a, a number just to send the B that coming in. Okay. Uh, because you can have the flux divided by area and then you get the, the flux density. So I go with B and I say uh, the geometry that I have is a surface called, no not the band, a uh, hull sensor and then I place OK on that and then you go and say I want to make sure that the B, the normal B and then you have to do undo to make sure that uh, it's just taking the normal of the uh, B, not the surface. And <clears throat> and then what you do is you go to the scalar and uh, basically you, what you do is you do an integral and make sure that you are taking an integral of whatever B goes to the surface. And then you go to the number, uh, in, input number, and then you press 1 over there okay and uh, go to the geometry and select the surface one more time and this time uh, hull sensor again and, uh, and then you will uh, basically select the integral of the entire surface okay and then you say I want to divide the surface area by what I have on the flux that I have okay and uh, that will be your um, and now I can add it. That will be your uh, uh, magnetic uh, field over the hull sensor, or like you can call it B for hull sensor. Okay, and press OK on that and done. Now you go to the results and you right click on the cr and right click on result and create fields report and go on the rectangular plot. And over there you select the ball sensor, which is the only B hull sensor, which is the only uh, calculated value, and just say new report. So now in what you see is over the time, what are the B that goes inside the, the hull sensor and uh, when you simulate it from 0 second to 1 second. Remember when you are simulating from 0 second to 1 second, we are actually looking at um, a phase uh, rotation of the of the magnetic field in the middle uh, 
from 0 degree to 360 degrees. So we should see a sine wave so, so of the deal, um, that, uh, that actually uh, shows exactly like this. So it's a sine wave that uh, the B is getting maximum because the, the corner of um, the corner of the uh, what do you call it uh, magnet thing that we have was the closest to us and then the corner uh, becomes the farther away and then we have the minimum B and then it goes up and down and also you should remember that uh, the magnitude of the B is also changing per phase so it's 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 sort of like this it's hard to calculate anymore so so how do you want to see that if you want to see this you double click on that and this is your so to visualize what I'm trying to show you here I'm going to uh, um, right click on that and say animate and press OK on that okay so this will take a little bit of time uh, to create the frames for you and after that you will be able to see what I'm talking about um, meanwhile when it's finished I'm gonna show you uh, the other version of that so in this case I used a cylinder for the magnet it's not anymore a, a, an, a, an empty box it's a cylinder and so when you rotate that you will get something like this as you can see over here we have the sensor right there and uh, the magnetic flux is going through the sensor is going upward and downward because the sensor itself uh, the the magnetic field is has four four poles and it's rotating but the um, you cannot see very well uh, it's rotating because it's totally symmetric so i'm going to uh, show you how it would be the rotation for the for the part that we made and it's still running so I'm gonna uh, come back when it's finished okay so this is finished and you can see the uh, the magnet is is rotating and that's the cool thing about this uh, design because you can see actually it's rotating and uh, and that's why you get different uh, magnetic field because the magnet itself has four poles and also because this gets closer to this here you get actually uh, a different uh, B and you can see that the B is actually having a sine wave sort of a um, uh, manner okay that's great so we saw this and if you have any questions please leave your questions underneath the video and if you have a design that you need to uh, to be done fast uh, I can accept uh, your designs uh, and I always uh, have a very small hourly charges that I, I do for the supports premium supports you can send uh, your designs to my email and uh, that would be it okay have a great day and uh, good luck with your simulations